Hey you, thanks for joining me today. Today we'll be going over a welcome sign that's laser engraved and hand routed. But first, my extension kit arrived. I was so excited to get it. This is going to expand my Ortu LM2 Pro. This is my original little girl. But I ordered the wrong kit. So for you guys, the left one is a series one and the right plug is a series two. Now, I did order the 10A laser, but I was having issues with it. So I'm just showing you how big it is. I had gotten some rails from AliExpress, and uh, I think I'm just going to expand the width now. Now that I've had to tear the machine down, I know a little bit more of its parts and that. So yeah, I want to expand it more. So I did get the 10A laser, but I was having some issues. So that's why this board is over here. Um, I was use, able to use the uh, extra plastic piece that uh, comes with the 10A laser that you're supposed to use on your um, laser access, but I decided to put it on there, which is a lot more durable than the videos that they were showing by putting it on the top of your laser. And I'm just showing you um, some zip ties for cord management to keep the cords from dragging on your work or getting caught in your laser. So let's get to the sign now. Um, this is my gluing station. It's almost impossible to uh, find the huge clamps. So the way I did it was clamp it down and use the uh, medium sized clamps to get it either end. So here it is all glued together and I am ready to engrave. So the nice thing is if you raise your machine you can slide larger signs or material underneath back and forth. And of course, this was done before I expanded my machine. So there's my air assist and my exhaust. And uh, I've opened up my files here. I'm gonna show you for which way I flip the sign. Um, and now I'm on the bottom E, so I'm going to have it that direction. That's why you'll see some of the letters in different uh, orientations, and that just depends on which way I'm sliding the material under the laser. So I'm gonna open that, and I am doing the uh, vectorized tool with no fills, 300 speed, M3 constant power, 850% um, is the max. And uh, this is how I laser engrave or cut um, my lettering into the sign and so I am going to actually do four passes of these and you're going to be able to see how deep I can get into the SPF which is a spruce pine or fir and this is the spruce that I'm using and it's uh, two inch thick so you probably saw me home already and set my origin Oh, I'm going to do that right now. Sorry, when I'm recording, the uh, audio recording is right in front of that screen there. So I always home and set my origin. And this is me actually framing the piece. And I've got that on super speed. So in a second, I'm going to show you what I do with the laser. So I always make sure it's home before I press play as well. And that's not setting the resetting the origin, just setting the machine to home. So it will go to the origin that I set and then begin to burn. So here I am just setting up my laser. So I have jogged the laser and I'm setting the origin right now. So I focus it because I have measured and made my pencil markings of where I want this lettering to go. And so there I am homing it and I am framing it. And this way I am able to move my sign around here and get it within the lines that I have put down with my pencil. So sometimes it's a little tricky or it's a little crooked, so that's why I uh, make a horizontal and vertical box to make sure I get it right in there perfect. And I've got it, so I home it and I start to burn. And like I said, I did four passes. I probably could have done more. But I'm actually pretty happy with the four passes that I did. Now, you may have seen my super goggles that I was wearing there that are orange filtered. Works a lot better for the blue laser. I definitely recommend investing in a good pair of laser engraving glasses 
the green ones that you get with your kit, just throw those right out. Um, you want good eye protection to save your eyesight. And now that all my laser engraving is done, I am ready to start routing. So I am using a flat edge bit in order to get closer to the lettering. And I will use a finer spiral bit or my Dremel tool to get into the finer corners. And I've got a little bit of wonkiness happening on my board there, but I plan to route down far enough. And when I'm measuring with my router, I'll just measure it to the end of the edge of the wood of how far I want to go down. And as I get closer and closer to the lettering, You'll see where in laser graved, it just literally peels right off and I get such clean lettering. Like if I got in closer and actually just took a razor blade and uh, had peeled that down. But I'll show you my little trick that I actually use. So you'll see a center point in the O there. So I just measured in between the M and the C and I drew an X to be able to get the center part. So my circle for the O is completely centered. And that was my Dremel tool and I had the diamond um, engraver bit on it. And I used that to enable to get closer to the lettering and sand off a little bit of the burnt edges. Um, I want my paint to be able to adhere to it. So taking it down a little bit allows the paint to go in better. Um, think of the Japanese system that they use for the burning the wood to make it waterproof. Uh, you definitely, if you're using water-based paints and stuff like that, you want it to be able to stick. And before I start to paint, I am going to make sure my cats are entertained, especially the kitten. So this is Lila. And there's Pumpkin, all entertained with cat TV on YouTube. It's like an eight hour video. My cats love it. They haven't attacked the TV and uh, tipped it over yet, thank goodness. So, if you haven't watched my other video, I am going to show you how to make a cheaper, water-based, non-toxic stain. And I just use my acrylic craft paints. Now, I only have a little bit of my uh, raw umber that I really like to use. So, I, that's why I will add some of the uh, other brown and a little black to darken it if I have to. And this is my cheesecloth. It's handy. So, I've mixed the paint up. It's very watery, consistent, as you see here. And uh, so, I'll mix it in one container. And then, I will take the cheesecloth and I will fight with the elastic to get it on top. And this is in case there was any chunks in the paint. And this is a great thing to use if you plan on spray painting or airbrushing. I use this technique to drain out any of the chunks that might be in the paint. So I'm just going to prime my brush with a little bit of water first. And dip it into my little water-based stain that I've made. I brush off the excess of it onto the side of the dish. And I will test it out on the sides first. And you'll notice that I am doing the back of the sign first, and I will explain to you why in just a second. So here I am going with the stain at a full concentrate without much water left on my brush. And that's why it's a good thing to uh, test it. I'm going to smooth that out now, and I'm going to actually add more water to my stain. So the reason that I'm starting with the back of the sign is I want it completed and cleared before I start uh, painting the front of the sign. Um, this way I'm not having the front of the sign upside down and possibly scratching the you know most important surface while I am finishing up the back. So I'm just going in with a water-based stain and I've gone to a much bigger bra brush and it's uh, softer bristled as well. You do not want a firm nylon brush because you will see the brush strokes more. So you'll see me going back very lightly and stuff like that just to hide any brush strokes and make it nice and even. And just showing you this wood is so beautiful and that's why I didn't want to paint this sign. I want those grains to show up. 
So this was the first coat of stain and I do actually go in with a second coat of stain before I start to clear. But because this is the back, I want to get to the front to show you guys the front. Um, my clear coat, I'm going in now with a clear coat and I am doing the sides and edges first because I actually want those to have the most amount of clear coats on them because the sides and the edges and especially the bottoms and the top take the most abuse. And uh, the bottom, in case it's sitting in any snow, of course, you want to make sure that's sealed really well. And the top, it's going to take rain, snow, it'll take a beating as well. So now when I do my clear coat on the back of the sign, I've switched to the bigger, softer brush as well. And you'll see I have my brush fairly loaded when I uh, go to put it on. Um, I make sure that it's not dripping though, make sure those drips fall back in the can. And a good saving technique there is to put a little piece of saran wrap on top and just put your lid on. So I've done two coats here and I'm just going over with it, uh, over it, sorry, with the 220 grit sandpaper um, because I've used a water-based paint and because I've uh, used a water-based clear coat, uh, the fibers come up. So it's uh, nice after the two coats if you do a slight little sanding and uh, I believe this is my third coat here. And you'll see that it is very milky as when you're putting it on, but as it dries, it dries crystal clear and just beautiful. And that's it dried that I let dry for 24 hours. And I'm finally ready to paint the front of the sign. So just showing you here some of my stain, some of my clears, ran over the edges and that. So I will actually take 220 grit sandpaper and uh, sand that down so that it's not so pronounced when I go to put the stain on. Um, I'm just using a flat edge brush here, nice and soft. It's an oriental brush. Uh, I just had put the lid on this container and put it in the fridge. So I would be able to use it on the front of the sign. So you'll see it's nice and thin, nice viscosity. And there's Kit Kat under the sign. There's Lila under the sign. Oh, there's Pumpkin too. So I'm just going to paint around the edges. And I don't want it to run, so I'm doing it very lightly on the brush and going around and starting with all my edges first and being very careful not to come up too much on the lettering. So I've got all my edges completed and now I'm going to switch to another brush to be able to get inside all of the lettering. So you'll see me priming my brush again with water and I'm painting at record speed here inside the lettering. I'm very careful not to let any excess paint pull up because I want this coat to be nice and even. And while I'm in, because this brush is so very easy to use, I will go over the uh, edges of the lettering as well. So to start out, I'm going to do com the complete center of the sign. And you'll see that I routed out uh, some grooves here to make it look like three barn boards were to put together, but it's actually one solid piece of a sign. So this is my first coat completed. And I just love how the wood grain really pops. Now I'm going to go in and do my second coat. So I'm using my medium sized brush now. And that's how rich and wonderful it looks with its second coat. So now I'm getting ready to clear as soon as that is dry. So I sanded some of my lettering where I had some oopsie moments. You'll see on the O there, I have yet to sand it um, because I was dipping the paint and bringing it over the sign and it dripped. I don't know what I was thinking. This is my 2 a.m. painting. Uh, I should have been in bed. 
So I'm finally all ready to start sponge painting. And this is a cosmetic sponge. So your sides are always the flattest. Um, the one edge seemed, seems to be a little wonky and I cut it down to size a little bit. Um, so it's a much firmer sponge for me to use. So I've got my white acrylic paint and I will dab the sponge into that paint. And uh, when you're doing this, make sure um, you're not too close to the sign because you could cause little splatter marks. So that's why my plate um, has a slight groove to it. And I will just start dabbing it onto the sign and being very careful to hold the plate again away from the sign when I'm dabbing the excess paint off. So this is half of the sign completed and you can see such a difference especially on the sea there from the white to the natural wood. And this is it totally completed and that just makes the lettering pop. Now for the O for the circle there, I plan on actually putting a steel piece, a circular steel piece there because I'm going to use magnets to hold on some things that I will show you in a wee bit. So this is the Verithane uh, diamond based exterior non-yellowing. Um, I can brush this right on top of the acrylic paint and uh, it doesn't activate the craft paint. Um, if you've ever tried using the poly acrylic on your signs, it reactivates and will smear your craft paint. Um, and poly acrylic is not an exterior paint, it's interior only. So I found this Verithane works just great. So I'm going over the edges and I'm painting the white before I clear the existing sign and that, um, just because I wanna make sure that white is all protected. Now, if you find you have any runs or accidentally dribble like I did there, you can wipe it right off with your finger right away. And so this is the first coat of clear completed on the entire sign. I believe this is the second coat completed. And of course I did the edges of the exterior, stained the whole center pieces and then went and did the outside. This is it um, after it's being sanded at 220 grit. And I'm going in with my third and fourth final coat. So this is the stand that I built for it because of uh, strong winds, rain, snow. This will give the sign a little bit more durability to be able to uh, weather our Canadian winters. And here is the sign all completed. And as you can see, it's only one piece. Now, I just used a spray can of, I believe, Rust-Oleum paint, exterior paint for wood for the frame, and it wasn't too bad a color match. I'm really glad how it turned out because I didn't want to have to hand paint it, hand stain it. I just had to use the one spray bomb. And as you can see, the O can be utilized for different seasonal signs. And this was my idea because there's so much competition for welcome signs and people undercutting themselves that I thought one sign to do the job of all seasons. And here I am actually laser engraving my first O insert for the sign. And this is it completed with its uh, hand painting and clear coat. So. It's finally at my customer's home and they are very pleased with it. Now this was their original sign they had done and it wasn't even two years old. So it looked like the lettering was uh, cut out of plywood. It wasn't properly painted or sealed. Um, lettering was falling off. And this is some of their original inserts that they had for their O's. And they are just the cutest. So I cannot take credit for these. And as you can see, whatever clear coat was they used, uh, yellowed really badly. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do some laser engraving of shapes of my very own. And I have designed up and made a catalog for people to be able to order um, different O inserts. 
But that's it for today. These are some signs that I'm trying to get done now that my laser is back up and running. Uh, Halloween is just around the corner. And this is my house. I haven't even decorated. This is from last year. So I have to get some signs done and I have to get busy decorating. So happy Halloween, everyone. What are you still doing here? Like and subscribe and go create.